This video is about the Automotive Generator Regulator. Although they haven't been used for many years, there's still some old classics around with them fitted. This first slide shows the internal wiring of the generator and regulator. This regulator has three magnetic relays. There are other versions, but they all work in a similar manner. This will be a simple step-by-step -step description of all of the functions of the regulator. The first thing we want to do is follow the field circuit. We can start here at the D-plus terminal, which is the armature output. And if we follow it up through the regulator, we can see we're going through the regulator contacts, another set of contacts, and straight back down to the F terminal on the generator. Now that we've seen the field circuit and its connection to the armature output, we need one more thing to very clearly understand how this generator functions. In the fields, which is on the outside of the generator here, we have a small amount of residual magnetism which is permanently in the field poles. The moment that our engine starts, we start generating voltage through the armature and that is connected, as we know, directly to the field circuit, which then starts to increase the field circuit strength. This cycle continues and our generator voltage quite rapidly builds up. The next step we're looking at here is the voltage regulation. Here we've got our voltage regulator coil. And we'll notice that it's also connected to the D terminal, which means as our generator voltage continues to rise, this voltage is applied to the regulator coil. When our voltage rises to the predetermined level, we can see here that the magnetic field strength on our regulator increases and it increases to the point where it open circuits our field circuit. If you remember from the very first slide, our field circuit travels through these contacts. And so as soon as we open the field circuit, our voltage coming out of the generator will immediately drop. That same voltage is applied to our voltage regulator coil, which means the magnetic field strength of that coil will reduce and our regulator contacts will close again, which causes our field circuit to reconnect and so our voltage will rise again. This process happens repeatedly and very, very rapidly to maintain a constant voltage output of the generator. Next, we'll have a look at the reverse current relay. Up to now, the voltage has increased, but no current has flown to the outside world. Note that the reverse current relay also has a voltage sensitive winding, and it's connected the same as our voltage regulator was to the D plus circuit. When our voltage becomes high enough at the reverse current relay, the current can now start flowing from our generator output terminal, through the windings, through the next set of windings, through our contacts, and off to the battery to begin charging. Next is the operation of the current regulator. If you remember from the previous slide, our charging current was going around through this coil and being a very heavy wound coil, it's current sensitive. As the current reaches its allowable maximum, the regulator contacts open, and this open circuits the field the same way that the voltage regulator did. Then as our output drops, the contacts close again, and our charging builds up once again. Next we're going to look at what happens as our engine slows down and our battery voltage 
then becomes higher than what the generator voltage is. Due to this, we have current reversing from the battery, through our contacts, back through the relay, and to, then to the generator. You'll see here now that this current is reversed through our relay, and it opposes the magnetic field which was built up in the first place. This causes our reverse current relay contacts to open and disconnects our charge circuit. The last thing we just want to see quite briefly is how the warning lamp functions. First of all, when we close our ignition switch, you'll see we have battery power, we have positive on this side of the warning lamp, and the warning lamp receives its negative through the generator through the armature circuit. The moment that the generator begins to charge, we then put a positive on this side of the warning lamp as well. And because we have no potential difference across the, across the lamp, it extinguishes. Well, that's it for regulators and generators. I hope it was of some use. Thank you.